world headquarters of Common Sense. Talk Radio. You're somebody who people would have first seen uh, in uh, rather more figure-hugging clothes than you're wearing right now, in a, in a cape, demanding the right to you, like other fathers, to see your child after divorce. Right now, your argument is men shouldn't get married at all so they don't face a divorce situation. What are you concerned about with these new laws? Well, I think, I think the issue is under the new no-fault divorce laws, which come in uh, next week, uh, the issue is going to be that these laws should come with a public health warning for men because marriage is a trap. It's a deadly divorce trap. And what's going to happen, Julia, is that the government and solicitors are claiming that these new no-fault divorce laws are going to be brilliant. They're going to remove the blame game. It's not. It is the fraud of the rings. It is going to simply displace the problems that dads have, married dads have, seen their children and force I, more men into the family calls. But I don't and understand. Why, why, does, why does having no-fault divorce, why does taking some of the, the, you know, the, the nastiness out of divorce with people having to say, no, it's your fault, no, it's your fault, this is what you did wrong, or, why, why would that make things worse for fathers? But it doesn't. That's where it's an absolute misrepresentation of the truth. And what's going to happen is fathers will be moved from homes quicker, they'll be removed from their children quicker, and they're going to end up in the family courts quicker. Now, under the existing laws or the previous laws, you can contest the divorce, and that will give you an opportunity to make an application to court for a child arrangements order to see your children. Right. Under the new law, you can't defend a divorce, and therefore, basically, in essence, you can be removed from the home, lose access to your children, and you're simply the problem is displaced into the family courts. Right, it and that's not, that's the key thing. Is because what, what happens, a lot of people who've not luckily gone through this process, is mm. unless it's all amicable and agreed between a, a mother and father to you know, to make sure they put the, let's face it, the child's needs first, which in my view would definitely involve seeing both parents on a regular basis. Um, you're yeah. in a situation where the, the, the arrangements for the children are, and often you know, the money and everything else, that is dealt with completely separately from the actual act of divorce. And you're saying this separates it even more and therefore makes it harder for men to make sure they can still have access to their children. Exactly. And what it's going to mean that, I mean, basically, you, if you look at even the men's health side, Julia, uh, divorced men are three times more likely to commit suicide. Yeah. Divorce is bad for men. It's bad for men's health. Men are more dependent on women and women are dependent on men. Men go through what we call the living family bereavement. They lose their wives, they lose their homes, they lose their children. They end up in bed sits, they end up in shared accommodation. 70% of separated dads live in poverty. This is really, really bad for men's health. Yeah. I think if we had divorce equality, which is what we campaign for, and if we had uh, parental equality to give both parents an equal right in law to see their children, brilliant. Yeah. But these you know fault divorce laws do not bring around any kind of reconciliation it does not remove the blame game it's simply going to asset strip and remove children move fathers from their children even quicker i, I mean this is it look I, no one's saying that you know life is hard, uh, as easy for, for single mums and, and largely we do see children staying with their mums and that actually may well be what many dads would actually want to be want to continue to happen no. but that doesn't mean they don't want to have contact i'm a child of of multi-divorce and at no point did anybody stop you know dads seeing yeah. uh, their children because and again i think that would be deeply morally wrong but we are seeing again and again the presumption is the children go to the mother and Correct. and and the, and there isn't a presumption that children need their fathers when it seems to me it's blatantly obvious the statistics are very clear the medical evidence the psychological evidence is really clear for both dads and their children that look unless there is proof that there is something there's some violence mm. or, or sexual abuse and we know that often those claims are made even when there is no evidence that anything like that has happened to keep fathers away from children as part of a, a nasty angry divorce settlement Children need to see their dads. They're as important as their mums. Absolutely. And I think what you rightly say is what we campaign for, I mean, some people try and misrepresent it and try and people say that, oh, we're misogynist with it. We are campaigning for equality. We want better outcomes for our children. We want better outcomes for mums. Don't forget, Julia, we have this terrible sexist notion in the courts that mothers should be chained to the kitchen sink <laughs> with their kids at home. I want mothers to be free to go and work, be radio presenters, become prime ministers, become chief executives. That's what shared parenting will do. It will give mothers the opportunity to go out and do all these amazing things. But as Gloria Steinman, the feminist, once said, 
Julia, you know, for mothers to be equal outside the home, farmers must be equal yeah but it's, it, it is fascinating how much um many people that, well that, no, but people will absolutely insist that fathers need to play their role and a, a father who doesn't financially support his children is clearly a bad father uh, you know and, and leaves his children he's a bad father and yet we have a system a court system and and a system where we we routinely stop fathers from seeing their their children and even when there is a court order requiring a mother to allow a father yeah. access Often, no action is taken when she fails that, to act on it. Yeah, about half of all court orders, you know, roughly speaking, are broken. Mothers can act with impunity. They can break a court order. They can defy a court order. And people say to me, I say to people, if you break a court order, you should go to prison. That's my view, isn't it? Yeah, but then I'm with you. Me, then people say to me, you can't send mothers to prison. Yeah, I you said, can. We already, <laughs> we already send mothers to prison. If mum doesn't send little Johnny to school, right, a local authority will find her or they'll send her to prison. That's what happens. But if mum doesn't say little Johnny again, see, dad, nothing happens. We have this terribly sexist system, misandry system, that's anti-father. We have prehistoric thinking, Stone Age courts and Jurassic judges, and it needs to change. And it's tinkering around, pretending that no fault of divorce is a panacea and going to solve it is a complete nonsense. Okay. It's fraud. Matt O'Connor, um, we're going to leave it there. You're, like, lots of people see you're in the back of a car right now. I know you're on the way to a uh, uh, a secret location where there will be an event a little bit uh, later this morning. Good talk. Hot talk. Talk. Bold talk. talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.